Welcome from Learn from the Experts, presented by the WBOA, which stands for Women Business Owners Alliance of the Pioneer Valley. We are a nonprofit organization with over 100 women with varying businesses and lots of talent. Um, my name is Freda Brown. I'm owner of Divorce Financial Services, and my co-host is... Hi, good morning. This is Ida Tassinari. I'm happy to be here, and I'm with Real Living Real Estate Professionals, and I'd be happy to help you find your path home. And today we have... I'm Christine Ford with Custom Marketing Solutions. And we're going to talk about making your marketing dollars count. Yes. So what kind of budget do I need to, for my business? Well, you don't need a big budget. Everybody thinks when they come to us for marketing that they need to have this big $10,000 budget with TV and billboards. And in reality, most companies don't have that and, and they don't need it, nor is it necessary. So what we kind of talk to them about is what their needs are and customize a plan specifically for, for them and for their business. Um, there's so many different channels that they can use to just stay top of mind to their customers. It's so important to do that instead of just kind of throwing your brand into their face with big billboards. Um, we have customer loyalty programs we can develop, um, newsletters, social media. There's so many different ways to stay top of mind to your customers and they appreciate that. Um, for example, one of our clients, he has such a niche market that it's so hard for him to reach his customers. So what he did was have us develop uh, a program for him and we do customer appreciation lunches at the different organizations that are all over the US. And this actually kind of shows them that they're valued as his client. They give out little promotional items at these lunches and it just makes them more appreciative of the business. That's great. Yeah. So how do you go about um, deciding when you're talking, you're sitting down and talking with a client, how do you, how do you hone in on what they need and what they don't need? What are some of the questions that, that, they a that you ask them so that, th that you get an idea of what they want to do? Absolutely, because every industry is different. So certain things are going to work for some industry that doesn't work for others. So it's really learning about what they've tried up to that point, what's worked, what hasn't, and then what their ultimate goal is, because you have to have a strategy with marketing. You can't just go in and say, I'm going to try this, and you try it for a month. Oh, this didn't work, so I'm going to try this. You really have to have some realistic goals and a strategy when you start to develop a marketing plan for your business. So, just can you just go a little slower on the different types of marketing uh, avenues? Yes. Yeah, the different services. It uh, again, like if I was meeting with you and I wanted to learn a little bit about your industry and what you did, and then I would offer up some ideas. There's obviously social media, which is huge, the internet, your website, that, that would kind of, we'd go through that first to see what was working with that. Um, there's print advertising, there's TV advertising, there's radio, um, there's so many different avenues. But again, it's gonna be based on what your ultimate objective is to get from your marketing plan. So, what if i just clueless as to where I wanna start with my marketing plan? I don't know what my marketing, plan is except yep. that I know that I need to get myself out there so what would be the first step that you would think that I would need to do so let's say that um, I'm going to open a recreational area of uh, the brand new sport uh, what would be the first thing that I would need to uh, think about so actually that's really good that you asked that because most people that come to us not saying that they're clueless but they, they really don't know what marketing, you know, what types of marketing to invest in because they're not marketing. They're not marketers. They're running their business. So I would say to you, if you were opening up a recreational facility, I would say, okay, what do you want to get from this? What do you want, what do you want your results to be from your marketing dollars that you have to spend? So it's going to all be based on what you want to see, what your results that so you want to I do. I want to see them come to my event, my, my place, and I want them to... Um, be yearly memberships. Okay, so what we would do is if it was a new place we would plan like a grand opening and we would promote that in that area with, with a certain radius. So say if you were opening it at a school we could go like a certain two to three mile radius and maybe do a big direct mail or a big email ca campaign announcing this big opening of this recreational facility. That's just to get people there. Once you get them there then you want to work on marketing that's going to get them to sign up. So if you had something going on continuously you want to get, get them something to sign up. So maybe you offer a special deal that day that they come on your grand opening 
for membership. Um, so there's different ways that you can work it to mm -hmm. kind of to make your marketing effective. And how do how do you, do you have uh, packages after you talk with the clients and find out what their needs are, and you then um, establish what the best uh, method of marketing would be for them? And Absolutely. is there different levels of package? Absolutely, and we're actually in the process of changing over to that. A lot of our, our billing was done hourly, like with, based on needs. We're trying to switch people over to a package price or a retainer price. So say you wanted 10 hours of marketing consulting or services every month. So we would put together a package based on 10 hours of our time that you would get devoted to your particular business every month. So it's really based on what your needs are. So you have a client that comes to you and they have Facebook, and they have Twitter, and they have LinkedIn, yes. uh, Acid Rain, and, and some of the other uh, social Media. networks. Acid yeah. Rain, I never even heard it's, of that. It's so Realtor. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, so, or, or <laughs> you know, community-based advertising. Yes. So how would you be able to focus what's going to best serve you know, the particular client? You're going to review what they've used, Yes. and then Yep, well a lot of our packages do include social media management and I think a lot of people can do it on their own but it's very time consuming as you probably know mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people just don't have time to do it. So they hire our company to handle their social media management and we, we handle all of those outlets where we can post and engage your fan base so that way you're staying top of mind. Again, like I talked about, just staying top of mind to your clients is so important for any industry, whatever industry you are. Just always maybe sending something out monthly, whether it's a newsletter or a direct mail piece or a posting on social media that's gonna relate to them. So that, that would be something that would be really important in terms of your industry is social media. So that would be something that we could develop a social media management package specifically mm -hmm. for you. So how, so how many times should a, a company send out an, uh, a Facebook message. A posting? Yes. I We try to do, even for our business, we try to do probably about three or four a week. Um, again, I, you don't want to do overkill. You don't want to saturate so people are like, oh, there they are posting yes. again. But it's also great to be engaging, to get people engaged and get people talking. And then a lot of times people see your post and they share it. Mm -hmm. So then all of their friends see it. Um, so that is beneficial to you and your business. So, so what about um, when people are, are what, I get emails. Sure. So, you know, and, and mm -hmm. anything that goes on my Facebook somehow ends on my Shows email. So I see, so I see those emails. Yep. And I mm -hmm. have um, this one company that's p posting three or four or five pictures every day. And then somebody comments on it. And so I get three or four comments on that same picture every day. Yeah. So to me, that's like, like I just delete them because I don't even want to look at them anymore because it's too much. That can be overkill. Yeah. Yeah, that can be overkill. Everybody's different. Um, again, if you're following that post, you're going to keep getting those messages on your email. That is your settings. But um, I personally, that would be, that's too much. This is, well, good. Because you don't want to get to the point where you're annoying people mm -hmm. and then they're going to unfollow you or unfriend you and then you're not seeing them. But again, it's finding that balance because you do want to stay top of mind. So you think two or three times a week? I think two or three times a week is good. I wouldn't say more than like four or five times a week. And so would you think um, that you would do it like different days each week as opposed to like every Tuesday and every Thursday to do like one week Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the next week Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so it's a different client. You can change it up. I think changing it up makes it interesting. I know like our my partner handles the postings for our Facebook page, but I know she would do like a, sh a Wednesday shout out to one of our clients. So on Wednesdays, we would recognize one of our clients and have a link to their website and just, you know, thanking them for their business. So that was something she would post. And I know like on Friday, she usually posts something because it's the weekend, you know, have mm -hmm. a great weekend. Or if it was Veterans Day, happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be about business either. It could be a general post that you're just putting out there or maybe like some advice for your business. Um, it doesn't have to be a salesy pitch, you know, just something that. And that's what I found is that less salesy pitch is more attractive on Facebook. Absolutely. And then when your company is doing the digital or the marketing plan, you take into account the demographics. Absolutely. And the location. Yes. And 
along with that, is it gives you the income, their age, and then you can target the market. You can target that ad. You can boost your post. Right. So more people are seeing it with a business page. Not as many people are seeing it as your personal page. It's just the way things are set up with Facebook. So you can pay to, to boost your, your post so more people are seeing it. But th that is really important to ask when we are meeting with our clients is what their target market is, what the demographic is that they're trying to, to reach, because that's going to also affect where you're going to market, what, what types right. of advertising mm -hmm. you're going to do, depending on age and, you know, the age of Facebook, what, what people are, what the followers are, if that's going to be the right venue. Some of our clients that we meet with, nope, don't want anything to do with social media. You know, they're, they're marketing to maybe seniors and they don't think the seniors are, are that engaging. They still like the print. They, they like to get the newspaper or the, the JI and read, it, read an ad. And that's what's going to get them to, to react and to respond. Well, I think the seniors are now, we're the, the taking over the Facebook and we're not doing the Twitter stuff and Snapchat, Snapchat and all the yeah. other ones. <laughs> But if you go on to Facebook, I've always felt that that also filters into some of the other uh, Twitter or LinkedIn and yeah. some of the other uh, social medias. It can, But yeah. I think the grandparents or the 60 plus demographics are getting on Facebook because they mm -hmm. want to see their grandchildren, great grandchildren, mm -hmm. and all yeah. the friends of everything else. And they may have been holding off to get on Facebook, yeah. but now they know because very few pe people actually actually have a photo printed. Yes. It's mm -hmm. all digital. Right. And if you want to save your digital history, you want to make sure you save it like on a zip drive or something so you can have it for years to come. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that there are more and more, but I think for that age group a lot, it's more for the social side of it. Yes. Maybe not so much the, the business. business. Um, just an example, my mom, I'm trying to help her with Facebook a little bit. She's kind of, you know, she's, she's not really sure how it works, but she's on it, you know, but she'll post something. She's like, did you see my wall? I'm like, mom, it's not, it doesn't work like that. You know, I gotta kind of explain it to her a little bit. She's getting it. She's getting it. I'm proud of her. She's good. She's turning the computer on. So that's a first step. But yeah, I think it's more, a lot of it for, for that age group is more the social part, wanting to see the grandparents and the kids. And, but I think more for the business side of it. Um, not necessarily so much. I think that age group, they still like to get the paper. They still like right. to read the ads. Can so. you explain the difference between your personal page and the business page and what's the difference between the two and how you would post to each one of them? I can try. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know, with, I know in terms of the personal and the business, the personal, like say you have 500 friends and you post something, more people are going to see your post. It shows up in their news feed. And when it's the business side of it, the business page, it's very different. Like, I, however many followers, you might have 300 followers. There's only like a small percentage of that. I believe it's almost like 8% or somewhere around there that actually see your post unless you pay to boost it. Right. Where in the, on, your, on your regular friends page, your regular home page, you don't have to do that. Now, can you explain to us, so say, Freda, you had talked about someone that wanted to start a new business. So say if it was a dog park or some event that you wanted to, to develop. You could create a, an event page, is that correct? Yes, you can. A special event page, so anybody Absolutely. that's interested in. And then you invite your friends. Exactly. Yeah. Can you do that on your personal page or on your business page or both? You can do that on both. Okay. You can do that And that's on a both. free service, yes, is it that is. correct? Yes. yes. Oh yeah, I, I post events all the time on my personal page and, and invite my friends. And yeah, that's an easy way to do it, very easy. And that's actually how most people do it now. You don't get invitations right. in the mail. It's right. just through Facebook right. or email right. so, for events. Uh, let's just go back to the marketing dollar stuff. How much should I think about sp spending? What is an average for for a, a business, a small business, one person, solopreneur, to be spending on, on, on marketing? It really depends on the industry, again, and I think what you have to do is set realistic goals because I think a lot of people think that, you know, okay, here's $500, what can you do with it? It, it's not really, it doesn't really work that way. It, it's really like, where are you going to invest it? But we want to take, what we, our company tries to do is take whatever marketing dollars that you have to invest and turn it into more revenue for your mm -hmm. business. So that's really our goal. Um, and like kind of how you said, we have different levels um, of retainer services each month. And again, it's going to be based on your budget and what you want to accomplish. And there's got to be clear strategies and objectives that we set forth before we put together pricing and everything for you. And is there a written contract on 
of what they expect from you and what you expect from Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there so has to be. A right. We call it a letter of agreement between both right. parties, and it's all clearly written what they have for a budget for per month, what types of services we're going to offer, and we have both, both parties sign mm -hmm. that. Yep. And so w when did you start your business? We started this February. Okay. Yes, this past February, my business partner and I. So tell me a little bit about your past experience. Yes, I worked 17 years in the marketing field. I worked for Lego, the toy oh, company. I was in go. charge of all of the marketing for the retail stores. And my partner also came from corporate, but she did a lot more digital, mm -hmm. digital marketing. I did more grassroots type marketing for retail. Um, so we actually have two totally different experiences, but whoever brings us on gets both of us, So, which is great. We can offer a lot of different types of services, yeah. Um, we both, the reason we started the company was we both did not like um, some of the corporate restrictions that you get when you're when you're doing marketing where we decided to open up our own company and we really wanted to kind of help the smaller to medium sized businesses to to be able to market themselves and they didn't have the money to have a marketing person so this way they can talk to us and we like to be able to help that smaller medium sized business really grow. Now do you have like a, a minimum investment for the marketing plan? We do, yes. So what would that be? We have a minimum $500 a month and, and, then a, and then a minimum three months contract now, currently. So now that's for marketing or that's not your fees, that's just for marketing? That's for marketing services, that's for our services. Okay. Yes, yeah, we start at 500 a month. It actually, we try to explain that, that we have to research your industry and that just to kind of really find out what is working in that industry. And then we also have a lot of connections with print, with TV, with radio, so we pass those discounts along to our clients, which really kind of helps almost cover our services. Mm -hmm. do, do you find that um, TV versus radio is more uh, return on investment? It's really based on the industry. It really okay. is based on the industry. Like we, partic particular this one, um, this one company, it's a solar company, and he is advertising on both radio and TV. Um, so it, it's going to really depend, again, on who's your target <coughs> market. Are they watching TV or are they listening to the radio? And that's going to really depend on wh what your best return on investment is well, going to be. Just talking personally, in the, the real estate industry, it's probably about 87% of most buyers or sellers are going to find your information online. Online, Compared right. to print uh, advertising. Mm -hmm. But there's still a, a demographic that still wants to see those pi the advertisements for the open houses or house for sale mm -hmm. in a printed newspaper. I'm not sure. Yeah. But it, it, it again, it goes along to the demographics and your consumer. Absolutely, yeah. and I'm sure your business is a lot of word of mouth and referrals Definitely. as well referral, too. Yes. Yeah. So that would be something that you would maybe want to look into, like a referral program. Right. Um, or rewarding people when they do refer you, making sure that you're showing your appreciation right. to refer your name out. We do the same with our company. Mm -hmm. And wh where's your company based? We're in Suffield, Connecticut. Oh, okay. Yes. And so do you have to have a license to work in Massachusetts and Connecticut? You so don't. Okay. You don't. We're an LLC. Okay, yeah. very good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. This is very informative. Good. Thank you I'm for glad. coming. I'm glad. Thank you it's for having me. It's been a pleasure. Me. Thank you yes. very much. Great to see you. And for any you. other information that you might like, please check the WBOA.org to check out Christine Ford. Marketing. Yes, custom Thank marketing you. solutions. Thank yeah. you very Thank much. You. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.